podcast. What's up, right. backstab slash? Hi, Justin. Give it to us. All right. What is up, everybody? We are recording this early morning, 4th of July. So hope everyone had a 4th of July. Good. A good fall. Reverse my words. It's early, like I said. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, what is up, Hackstab Slash? We are getting into In the Mouth of Madness from 1995. And, yeah. you know, it is Waterboy's pick. So, holy crap. Take a seat. Just buckle in while the three of us try to get through this and uh, figure out what is going on in this movie. Uh, anyway, if you like what we you hear today, smash the subscribe button. Give us some love. Hit the thumbs up. Follow us on every single social media. And I am just Justin. That is somewhat hacky. That is stabby. Sean, take it away. What's up? I, I don't know how to follow that up, dude. Like you, that, got, That's I, amazing. That was yeah. I, I am a firecracker to your fucking M80 right now, dude. Way to bring the energy. Good what morning. Cool. Hashtag awesome. slash happy Fourth well, uh, of July. Let's happy. get it. Yeah. Waterboy, cool. why the fuck did you put me through this? Uh, because I like uh, I like fucking with you guys, and uh, this was uh, this no. was a great movie. No, you don't like fucking with us. You don't pick the greatest movies in the world. Oh, I picked. They're so I good. am fully it. it it just I, I I have wrapped my mind around mm. the fact that you told us that you like '90s movies and these all have nostalgic like hates for you. No, they don't. This man, this man is what you're after. This I man might... is your secret boyhood crush. No, one bro. We have watched every movie he's done outside of Jurassic Park. Oh, Jurassic Park's coming next week. Bro. <laughs> so what are you drafting Jurassic Park for us next week? I, I am. <clears throat> oh man, my Jesus throat's messed Christ. up. All right, give us some background <clears throat> on this water boy. Why'd you pick it? Let me clear um, my throat. <laughs> <clears> throat. So um, I literally typed in uh, crazy ass movies from the 90s. And this was one of those movies. That's your thought process. Why you drafted all these movies for us. You didn't even watch Barbarian, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, I switched. Like, I don't even understand. That was your thought. I thought we were supposed to draft movies we <clears throat> liked. Or we haven't seen <clears throat> yet or something. What, you didn't like this movie? Well, we're going to get into it. We're we'll going into it. We're we'll going into it. Yeah. We'll get into it. Oh God! Yes, I do want to say thank you, honestly, because look, there's so many different subgenres in horror, and you've really helped me realize this one I just don't like that much at all. And I'm not saying things are different, (laughs) a bad movie, but some, some just aren't for me. So thank you for learning, for helping me learn more about myself. What a positive spin! What a positive spin! Do you want to know what a lot of all these movies have in common? Not that they're terrible. Cosmic horror, Lovecraftian. Oh yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. Sam Neil. HP Lovecraft. Uh, based off books. I don't I don't yeah. know. Dude, people love, love like Lovecraftian films, like the Cthulhu and all that stuff. And that's cool. I'm I've not even making fun that. of that. I'm not even making fun of it. Like, this is all Lovecraftian horror stuff, a lot almost every single movie you pick. And that's cool because like that, like I said, <clears throat> doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Subgenres of horror. And I'm just I'm realizing like that's not for me. But that's cool because you know, there's definitely some people like you too in the world. <clears throat> kind of scary thought, this but is, uh, 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 yeah, let's go. <clears throat> yep. Is this uh, just the throat clearing episode? Can we get like fucking sponsored uh, by Mucinex? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, please, someone help me out. I've been like this for a week. Like, no, I think I'm, I'm totally gonna ask for the to be able to plug them on this episode. That's to plug something. Let's go. Be our worst uh, audio uh, episode ever, but let's get into it. But yeah, holy crap, I need a uh, drop. All right, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Rod, Rod just gonna give us a second chance and be like, "You guys didn't mention the D word once, but I couldn't stand the." <laughs> 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 Seriously, I've been smoky for 37 years. <laughs> it, well, I mean, in this movie, that's all they do is smoke. <laughs> this guy's a chain smoker for sure. Jesus. <clears throat> all right, water boy, let's get into it. Let's uh, let's kick this off. Let's get rolling. All right. In the Mouth of Madness, directed by John Carpenter, 1999 horror film. There's your Halloween tie-in. Game over. Right? Let's go home. <laughs> Game, Game over. Set, match, right, boys. Turn it off. I actually really wanted to just address that really fast before we get into this, in case people don't actually watch to the end. Uh, one of the things I do is do a Halloween tie into every single movie, and a lot of it I have to work so hard. It's unbelievable, and I've actually become really good at what it is, and I can always find it. Last night at 10 p.m., I panicked. I said, oh, my God, I forgot to find, like, the tie-in. And I literally ran to the movie, and I'm like, oh, my God, you dumbass. It's directed by John Carpenter. That's why I didn't write it. So case closed, Halloween tie-in. Let's go. Jump into the movie. <laughs> so it's a horror movie. Uh where a writer, Sutter Kane, goes missing, and an investigator, John Trent, goes down a rabbit hole on his whereabouts and discovers the impact of horror writers' books have on its fans. All right. 
So we open up to an absolute banger playing while the printing machine's going in the background out of the new dude, book. This opening scene dude. is way too long. Way too it long. Is, dude. Way too long. <laughs> it's it's pretty long. I now know how a book gets printed start to finish. <laughs> this guys... is like the Chucky 2 like all over again <laughs> where they reanimate the doll and it just it's forever. But that was way cooler. Do you guys have um a fun fact about this opening? So I'll just Do say I? it now. Yeah. It eventually no. ended. That no, did yeah. eventually end. That, was, uh, that is a very fun fact. Um, so they wanted to use Enter the Sandman by Metallica, but it was too expensive. <laughs> That's what John Carpenter wanted to use for the opening song. Hush, God. little baby. Now in a mental hospital, we see a doctor who looks like a wish version of Matthew McConaughey uh, putting John Trent's or Sam Neill into a cell with him screaming that he isn't insane. And the whole block joins in too. I'm not insane. <laughs> and then we get the Carpenters. We're all, we've only just begun. Not the Carpenters again. Uh, and we get a knock on the door before a switch to Axe's blood and weird monster shit. Uh, we're introduced to Dr. Wren, who goes in to see John drawing crosses all over the walls and on himself. Uh, wants to know how he got there and that he starts explaining that he was a freelance insurance investigator. And it all started with the case he was on with the disappearance of an author, Sutter Kane. We pan out before he was in the institution. Can we Rob, can we talk about this institution setup real quick? Yeah. Justin, do you have any input before I just absolutely lose my mind and read my notes verbatim? Read your notes, man. Let's go. Is this an institution or a choir practice? Never mind. It's just the hospital they put you in to prep you before you go on the event horizon. This doctor looks like the Riddler before Jim Carrey played the Riddler. The oh other the guy is definitely the same dude from the Ninja Turtles before he invented the ooze. Crosses and swollen testicles? What the fuck, Waterboy? <laughs> Another uh, interesting fun fact I have. in my uh, notes, What about the swollen testicles? Well, I wrote, I wrote, what the fuck, Waterboy, probably four times in my notes. Like, not it, it's so many times in my I, notes. I haven't even wrote it yet. I, I'll, I'll let you know when it, it's in my notes. But a hundred percent, I have that written down yeah. like four times. Yeah, we all agreed. No, no dropping the D word. And then ten seconds into this movie, he goes, "I'm not insane." And the doctor goes, "Well, the guard with the swollen testicles would beg to differ." <laughs> balls and balls not are not dicks. <laughs> all right let's go balls to the wall boys <laughs> all, all right, right. Uh, we see robinson and john sitting at a diner after exposing a guy for insurance fraud we see a man coming out of the store wielding an axe walking over to them staring through the window before breaking it with the axe there also is a mail truck in the scene i have that shout written out. down in my notes <laughs> shout out we must spot those anywhere uh, yep. <laughs> ask if he reads sutter kane he has some weird ass fucking eyes going on before almost hitting him with the axe. If Robinson hadn't shot him. Riots have been ensuing for Sutter Kane's new novel, In the Mouth of Madness. Sutter Kane has gone missing since the release of the book. The man that was wielding the axe was Sutter Kane's agent, we learn. Apparently, he started to believe that his work was more fact and not fiction. While walking, John stumbles upon a cop beating the absolute shit out of a tagger before the cop <laughs> asks John if he wants some too. You want some too, punk? <clears throat> Gosh. Riots and violence still ensue due to reading the Sutter Kane's books, causing wide-scale delusions. John starts to read his books as well and sees the image of the cop in the alley looking monstrous and other towns wielding, um, other townsfolk <laughs> wielding axes and circling the agent and then chopping him up before he wakes back up in his apartment and then seeing the cop again and then finally really waking up. <laughs> oh, God. Anybody, you guys want to take this over? For yeah, some? yeah. Who the fuck wields an axe <laughs> in broad daylight with no panic and then crosses like four lanes of traffic, right. smashes through a window before anyone realizes what the fuck's going on? Shout out to the mail track. Also in my notes, dude, I seriously have written down, is this an underground fight club? Of half demon zombies, gross creep out factor is at a 10 right now. And what the fuck is going on with the man bear pig cop from South Park? <laughs> to the man bear pig That's, cop. Yeah. <laughs> he did look like a pig. <laughs> oh my God. 
Jesus. Dude, and, and then, like, when he wakes up from the dream, uh, I just, uh, why does he have black face paint on like he's playing football? Uh, beats the shit out of me, dude. I, he, he, he just, he, he rubs face. his eyes he, and then he's just got, like, the black marks. Yeah, like, he's, underneath, he, he's, he's getting got, ready, man. He's like, his oh, lights are really, book, like, the lights some are really bright there. in his house. Yeah, it's, it's game day. It's I gotta get ready. <laughs> he's putting his wall paint on, man. He's taking this book serious. Do you guys yeah. think they was sponsored by like Marlboro or like American oh, sure. Spirits or something? Because he smoked nonstop through this whole thing. He got. He ended up getting cancer from this movie. He oh, actually God. sounded like Waterboy when he was done. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're getting rough. we're getting an idea. John starts cutting up the covers of the novels and forming them into a map, possibly They're leading fucking to the New Hampshire, <laughs> bro. Jesus, dude. John and Linda start heading to that location. It's crazy. If you, if you figure it out, me, you can get a lunchbox. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, God, dude. What are yeah. we watching, Waterboy? I don't know, man. I, this is my first time seeing this. <laughs> is it really? Wait, is your first time watching this? Yeah. You picked this not even knowing? You just picked... It's because he's got an infa- like infatuation with this man right here. This is, we needed to stop this podcast and turn this into a therapy yeah. session for him. Can, can okay. I turn this? I'm going to turn this into a meme of every time Waterboy picks one of his movies, that's the <laughs> face he makes. 100%. Like, just staring at the screen like Sam Neill. Just, oh, let's go. Jesus Christ. Uh, Linda is driving, and she looks as if she's starting to doze off as she passes a kid on a bike playing cards in the spokes or seeing him again going the other way as an old creepy man and then she hits him with this with her car <laughs> continuing to drive down the road the lines disappear and it appears that the car is just floating on a void before flashing lights and crossing the beetlejuice bridge and it turns i have that daylight. written down <laughs> i have that written down <laughs> <clears throat> They're now in Hobbs End, and the town seems abandoned. Driving up to the Pickman Hotel, and we have Francis Bay as Miss Pickman. John, who, who's this? It's Happy Gilmore's grandmother. Dude, I was shocked when I saw that. Like, I, I could not even, I'm like, what is even happening? Like, uh, yeah, all right, yeah, just keep going. Per- per- perfect. You, cast, you don't perfect. want to talk about the 50-year-old kid? <laughs> not at all? Dude. My notes literally say water boy. I hope your notes are amazing. Just like all the other movies. I have no idea what's going on right now. I the kid on the bicycle just that. aged uh, just aged 50 years and reminds me of the chick from the Goose Months movie who can't take off the mask. I go, and now the car's flying? Jesus fucking Christ. No, yeah. and now it's magically daytime and we're at Hobbs End. What is going on right now? No adults at all in this town with a bloody axe in the distance. Are we watching In the Mouth of Madness or is this a Children of the Corn remake? Uh, it's both. It's a I thought the scenes Jesus are cool, Christ. though. I thought like the, I didn't know what was happening, but I thought the driving scenes were cool when like, you kept seeing like, the creepy stuff like that. I thought that was, I didn't know what was happening, but I thought it was cool. It's yeah. funny. You mentioned the goosebumps, but that mask looks exactly like. If you watch the Goosebumps episode, The Mask 2. Yeah. Where the guy wears the mask. Oh, dude. And then, and then I've got Happy uh, Happy Gilmore's grandmother works at a hotel. Is this how she plays her nursing home hospital bills while he's in a golf tournament? <laughs> you can have a glass of shut the hell up. <laughs> dude, I uh, yeah, I wrote, I wrote a bunch of Happy Gilmore <laughs> grandma stuff, too. I, could, I couldn't believe when I saw her. I was like, what is happening? Um, Water boy, why do you do this to us? So, <laughs> Linda is losing it. Please, uh, continue. The painting turns and it looks at her. It seems as though they are living through a Sutter Kane story. After going to the church, we have a group of men with shotguns looking for Kane. They had his boy. And uh, we see doors opening and closing rapidly. And then the boy changes into Sutter Kane. And then dogs start chasing after them from the side of the church. Um. This guy's makeup, he looked like old Biff from Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. He does. I'm ju- just putting it out there. I Same know make- Justin probably hasn't seen Back to the Future, but oh, I, I didn't want to say it. I don't know what. Wow, that's uh, messed up. Uh, I didn't even want to say anything. 
Can we hurry up and get to how impressive this church is? That church is freaking incredible. It's an, <laughs> insane, dude. It's in the middle of there's not even a road going to it. Nothing. And then there's no building it, around this it. Gargantuan mammoth of a church that has got to be like the pinnacle of Catholicism with upside down crosses and like just massive, you know, monuments composed of Jesus and shattered glass. And then not to mention this entire town has not one fucking car. The the whole walkthrough and then out of nowhere we get just the entire town decides to drive up on a nice sunny day as it turns into a dark <laughs> rainy day and they all get out with fucking pitchforks where's and axes my boy and a child. yeah where's my boy where's my boy at sutter justin you need to take an add pill and fucking get in on this i'm oh, sorry i'm sorry i i, I, wanna, so I, zoned out. I, know, dude, I, I he, wanted to let him talk i, was, I didn't want to interrupt him right, so justin, we can get through it faster i was i had a strategy go ahead. Go, what's your strategy i was just gonna let you talk faster so we're like so, so we can end the podcast. <laughs> get to the end. I have I have plenty of stuff to talk about at the end. I just was just hoping to speed up a little. And uh, thank you for calling me out of my ADD again. I think I did see like a bug staring at my wall. I'm like, uh, oh, Pearl. Um, t- turns out that Sutter Kane was a hoax. Um, Linda says, but they were not supposed to find anything while heading. Linda starts getting weird and takes off with the car. John goes and walks to the town and goes to the bar and finds a resident explaining he should leave. Something's going on in the town, and it went for the kids first. Linda heading to the church. A group of kids approach her. A little girl is formed like a, another pig monster. It's mommy's day. You're my mommy. Hey, she could grow up to be a beautiful butterfly, all right? Don't you judge that child. <laughs> Justin? <laughs> She needs to see the dentist, though, that's for sure. Uh, upon entering the church, she stumbles onto Sutter Kane, typing away on the typewriter. For years, I thought I was making this up, but they were telling me what to write. Handing over to the door, bulging, trying to open with sounds of monstrous creatures behind it. You said bulging. <laughs> you can't control yourself, John. How to point it out. I'm sorry. Uh, unreal. That's why I laughed because I knew you were going to say something. It's unbelievable. Any, I can't help uh, it. <laughs> it's a problem. I need to see someone about uh, it. At least, at least you know now. I mean, that's good. You can, you can, you have some stuff to work on. First step to solving a problem is admitting there is one. Yeah, exactly. Right. We all have our mm. things. Like Linda, playing these movies. Jesus, <laughs> Sam Neil issue. Sam Neil. Uh, Linda almost. Do you have a- posters of him in your bedroom? Uh, I'm not turning my camera around. Right. <laughs> That's just good. Yeah, please ahead, don't. Get, but yeah, please or am I? Too. Linda, almost in a trance, peers upon the book and sexually caressing Sutter with a demonic entity attached to the back of him. Linda, Every movie you pick, people start growing tentacles. Seriously? Sorry. We're not there yet. I'm oh, sorry. All I could think about was this fucking <laughs> demon on the back of his head or whatever it is. Do you guys remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Yes. He was on uh, Mars. Total Recall? Was, yeah, Total Recall. And he's got it, like, coming out of his chest and... Sh- oh, all right, just continue. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My rant is over. Oh, God. L- Linda, back at the hotel, passes out on the bed, with John having no idea what has taken place. The picture has changed again. Uh, Miss Pigment's turned into some sort of monstrous creature, almost looking like that guy from Slither, hacking away at tentacles. She even had the two tentacles coming out of her chest. I I put down, that's not Happy's grandma. That's Doc Ock's wife. (laughs) Right? Peter. Uh, Linda has now changed as well. Everyone throughout the town has changed. John heading to the bar witnesses the man before blowing his head off with a shotgun and the mob awaiting him outside. John punches Linda in the face and puts her in the car, realizing she has the keys before she swallows them. He hot wires the car just in time. Linda getting out of the car like a creepy as fuck contortionist. Uh, oh, yeah. Kane, Kane has a job for you. So this is definitely John Carpenter. That's like a that's like some thing shit going on there. Uh, now Linda's seen riding on the back of the bike, and once again, he has brought right back to town. 
crashes the car and he passes out and he wakes up in a confessional like i confess i'm sorry i put you guys through this <laughs> really sorry all right i, ha- I have that i have that written down it, it just simply says this isn't how confessionals work <laughs> And then I put my man finally chooses to run through the mob because these time loops are insane. And he crashes for the girl, you know, the one who just creepy crawled out of his car and gave her best Scott Strat impression on the back of a bicycle with arms wide open. Oh my God. Uh, oh, that didn't win like I thought it would. <laughs> I can't sing or else I would have sung that with you, dude. <laughs> Welcome to this place. I'll show, show you, you my everything. huge chin. <laughs> Just, oh, okay. With churches and demons. <laughs> All done. Sutter Kane gives the completed work to John to take back to the real world. Ripping himself open like a page in a book. Releasing the monsters from the pit. Chasing John before it transitions to him on the street back to the real world no don't you skip over this scene water boy what tunnel did he just run through uh that where was... else have we seen that i don't know dude that's that's yeah, that wasn't the fucking bridge between the reactor and, and the front of fucking nope. event horizon nope. out in space nope. he did that not was... just run from ellis hobbs fucking new hampshire around neptune and then back to new york <laughs> neptune that was, a, that was a corn video <laughs> <laughs> Right, running into a paper boy who has no idea uh, what Hub's End is. He hitchhikes to the nearest hotel, and the receptionist gives John a package. Somebody knew he was there. It's the manuscript for In the Mouth of Madness, and he burns it in the sink. On a bus, John dozes off, but wake up and sees Sutter next to him, saying he is God now, and he can't get rid of him. Did you do know what my favorite color is? It's blue. And then he wakes up and everything's blue. <laughs> so weird. I'm blue if I was green. I'm but dumb but dumb but And then waking up to the actual world in a panic sweat. Letting the publisher know of the events that had taken place. There was never even a Linda. She didn't exist. It's the all man. in your head. That's pretty crazy. That was I was that's insane. Crazy the man- ending. The manuscript was dropped off by him months ago, and it had been out for seven weeks with the movie coming out in a week. Panic and schizophrenia are taking place everywhere, seeing a dirty and homeless looking John witnessing somebody coming out having read the book with the same blood from their eye. He gets an he had axe. those crazy fucking toad eyes, too. Yeah. And he gets an axe and he swings yeah. it. And- yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And he swings it into him before we pan back to him inside of the asylum. Did you like the book? I must ask you a question. (laughs) (laughs) I have that written down. Sorry. (laughs) Oh my God, stop. I did it so I wouldn't forget. He's like, this one's going to kill. Insert joke. This one's... (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God! Christ, Cry- uh, cries and screams are heard throughout the asylum that night, leaving only John left. Radio heard. All major cities are silent. People going into rage killing sprees and morphing into creatures. He grabs a bucket of popcorn to go catch a movie, which is just him doing everything he had already gone through. And that is the movie. <laughs> That was so cool, the ending, though, when he's in the movie theater. Like, what a what a, what a cool ending. So I have some thoughts on these closing part? scenes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did he survive that overnight massacre because he covered himself in random hand-drawn crosses? Like, is that why <laughs> nothing could get into that oh. door? <clears throat> uh, it's, not, it's not confirmed, but it's definitely a possibility. I'm also 1,000% convinced when he got out of that room and we saw the hallway that that's the hallway – from Jacob's ladder. You could be you right. Tell me it's not. Tell me it's not. That and all these movies come from the same universe. I bet I'm... I challenge you to challenge me to challenge my theories. It's funny that you <laughs> said that. That's a lot of challenging. I I, yeah. I did think of that when I was watching this last night. 
I did think that hallway. My closing notes are just, I'm so lost. Twilight <laughs> Zone, question mark. Did he pay for the popcorn or did he just take it? Oh, Is he God. watching himself? What's going on? And laughing. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm so fucking stupid. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I had that in my notes a lot of what's going on. And I'm not going to lie, like this movie, I didn't like it. But um, I think it's it was a super, amb- like some people love Lovecraftian horror movies, the cosmic horror and stuff. And I think it was a super ambitious movie. And I'm sure there's a lot of meaning behind this. Like it asks the question, what is reality? So, I mean, it, I think he definitely tackles a really cool, interesting concept um i just didn't really it didn't play out super good for me but i mean some people probably love that and i can i guess like your to, rating can you yeah 3.4.7 4.8 yeah all right that's dang, insane dude. how are you kidding me right now same way like same way like dude oh that's like yeah, all right so i'll do my rating right now because sean literally just like actually <laughs> called it i gave it a 4.8 but I also want to say, like, I don't. It's I don't know, like some, like I said, you're not, you're not, you're not hating it, like that's the thing. Immensely. It's not like I, yeah, it's not like this is one of those movies. I'm, I, I'm not like, oh my god, I hate this movie so much. It's just one of those movie, like personal taste. I guess it wasn't a hundred percent like me. Like even like when you yeah. made me watch Jacob's Ladder, like I gave that a higher rating. I thought it was a good movie too, but I, like, that's nothing I'd ever want to watch. Like it just wasn't even for me. Like this movie, I didn't really like. I had a hard time getting through it. But um, I could see, like, some people might love Cosmic Horror, and they might like this, and I would even understand that. I can even respect that. I just didn't like this movie. It was tough for me to sit through. Just wasn't loving it. 4.8. All right. Johnny boy. Me. <clears throat> I uh, lately have been – it feels like I'm a hit or miss with Waterboy picks. But uh, as much as it sounded like I had no idea what was going on in this movie, and it just confused the fuck out of me. Uh, there's something about this movie that had me hook, line, and sinker through the whole thing. I'm uh, gonna give this a seven out of ten. What is wrong? I with I, I want to watch this again. It's... As much as like these are like as much as all these movies feel the same. Like I couldn't stand the void. I loved Event Horizon. Like it's just been such a roller coaster ride with me, and I think that's what makes all three of us great on this podcast. Is like. You fully you don't like cosmic horror or anything like that, Justin. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm in the same boat, dude. Like I can't stand the shit. But the last three movies between Event Horizon, Jacob's Ladder, and this has got me changing my mind. But in the same aspect, like I, I don't want to seek these movies out. I don't want to sit yeah. down and watch these by myself. I'm, right. I'm going to rely on Waterboy going forward, making me watch this fucking shit. No, so, that's because yeah. I. Like both the madness, Jacob's ladder, like everything that he's picked outside of Event Horizon, I would have never pressed play. Good to know. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm changing you a little bit. No, 100. percent Like even like I said, how I didn't like this. Like I I get how people can like that. Like even like when you talk about Event Horizon, like some so many people like love that movie, and I just I'm not a big like space horror and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, I thought this movie was ambitious, and I think it is cool. Like what is reality? Like there's a lot of cool things going on there, and I thought it was a cool concept. And I just didn't really, just didn't really yeah. land it. But uh, Waterboy, what do you rank this movie since you picked it? I was gonna give it a seven point five. Um, it 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 is a good watch. I mean, I do like movies like this. Um, I also want to say that this is part of a trilogy John Carpenter had out his apocalyptic trilogy, where he had the thing, this movie, and there's a third movie called The Prince of Darkness that he also did. So um, maybe we'll I think that you one actually eventually. see references of The Prince of Darkness in this movie, don't you? Yeah. I, yep. You do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You raise me hand again. Oh my god, I'm doing it again. All right. So if I, this is this is kind of weird again. So I rank this the lowest out of the three of us again. And once again, Sean, you destroyed it the whole entire time. Cut off Waterboy, made fun of him the whole entire time, and then you also didn't give it a good ranking. And I, I was like quiet and very respectful, respectable. Like, what is going on here? Like, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let the guy talk. I'm gonna be so respectful because I. Uh, I want to be open minded and I don't want to be like, oh, I hate this. Like I, I was hoping I like this, but how did you like this? If then you, you made fun of I, it the whole time. I, did, I, I didn't say I hated it. I just had no idea what was going on. And okay. I think I would love this movie if it took out more of those like random ass flash scenes. Yeah. Like with the, what you know the what fuck I mean? ones. 
Yeah, if it got rid of some of the what the fuck moments, I think yeah. Justin, I think you'd be a little higher on it. Okay. If it stuck more to the thesis of what is right, reality yeah. and yeah. and living vicariously through the book until it becomes his reality, and less of the flash here, flash there, insane asylum, flashback, right. flash here, old guy on a bicycle, flashback, creepy crawly, <laughs> flashback. Guy on a bicycle. You know what I mean? The, tra- the transition. Yeah, no, I, I, I just hundred yeah. percent get what you're saying. Yeah, I th- I think that stuff probably checked you out of this movie. Yeah. But if they were to like remake it, this would definitely be a movie I'd sit down and watch again. Did, you guys got um, some facts? I, I some... actually go ahead, Justin. I have uh, one that I know you guys don't have. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a ton, but um, I got there was a movie inside a movie, so you know I recommend yeah. that. they were they're watching a movie, 1953's Robot Monster, and they put that in there because that was one of John Carpenter's favorite creature feature um, movies. When he was oh, yeah. a kid, so we put that in there. I got a random one when like Linda was driving in the car. She like tried eating the car keys, and I just thought it was cool that those car keys were made out of pasta, so she could do that. So I wrote that down. Uh, Sutter Kane was based loosely on like Stephen King, like writing. Um, and then I it got... felt very Stephen King like. Oh, yeah. so much, and I love Stephen King so much, and that's like the yeah. first thing I thought of. Like, it was obviously like he was based on Stephen King. And then I got the paperboy at the end was Hayden Christensen's debut in a movie. What's he uh, from? What's he from, he, Justin? Yeah. Okay, I don't he he's the Star Wars dude. Yes. I don't know who he plays. He he's plays Anakin. The light, he's the lightsaber kid. Um, and that's all I got. The lightsaber kid. <laughs> Come on, don't make me people aside. I, I dude, you're gonna get so much hate for that. That's why I, I respect the <laughs> go go lightsaber. Go in Anakin. Mike Cowan, if y'all listening, when this episode drops, I fully expect you Monday morning to give this man a full rundown lesson on all things Star Wars. Everything. He's frozen. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, I just froze in the worst face ever. And no offense to anyone in Star Wars, like, go in again. I hope you beat the bad guy. Justin's and, uh... just not about that space life. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, let's, cha- let's Anakin, change this. I hope you beat the bad guy. <laughs> I don't know. Like, isn't, like, someone his father or something? Anyway, moving along. Sean, what do you got? <laughs> What do I got? I I, I would like Waterboy to go first because I am, like I said, it's one fun fact. And I know you guys don't have this. All right. So um, during the end credits, only the character names appear, not the actors. Hmm. Oh, pretty freaking facility. They didn't even want to be attached to this work. They're like, oh, <laughs> no, they to like to put you into like reality where the names all like their names are just. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, the baseball card in the front spokes of his bike in the scene is a uh, 1999 Fleer Brady Anderson. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. In case you guys wanted to know that. What was he on? Uh, the or- He was on the Orioles, right? Um, okay. Awkward. Never mind. Don't know sports. Like you don't oh, know yeah. Star Wars. Gotcha. Uh, when a hand breaks through the glass of Sam Neill's cell, a piece of fake glass actually cut his neck. Um, the Miss Pickman creature was shot as a miniature. Originally, it was a man in a suit prosthetic, but John Carpenter didn't find it convincing enough. All right. Master Ahara knows what's up. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it for me. And Sean, let's, uh, let's hear that closing. Uh, all right. So when we see our man, Sam, uh, on the side of the road, sitting in the grass, and he flags down a truck. When that 18-wheeler pulls over, there is a 1-800 number on that mud flat. Guess what I did last night, boys? You did I not. I called that 1-800 number. What? <laughs> the the number is 1-800-387-8248. It says on the mud flaps, we love trucks, Right. Yeah. I was thinking like, oh, this has got to be cool. It's got to be like an Easter egg in the movie. I'm going to call it, and it's going to be something related to the movie. I'd like to apologize to Roger in advance. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. We have a special promotion today for select callers. If you are over 50, please press 1 now. Oh, it's if changed. not, press 2. Oh, wow, that wasn't as funny as I thought, because last night when I called it, it was a what? sex hotline. What just happened? No. <laughs> I, sw- I swear to God, look, I, it says well, yesterday on one of the calls, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I called it yesterday and it was a fucking sex hotline. Stop it. First of all, what is no the way. thought process that you saw that? Why would you think you needed to call that? That's my first. Well, I, I, I was genuinely curious because I was like, you know, sometimes they do that shit in movies where you yeah. call it and it's an Easter egg. Yeah, but this movie they came always out so many years it, ago. They always use that 555 crap. I figured one eight hundred like they bought it and it's just been sitting there. So I was like, oh, let me give it a call and see what's going on. Second of all, you try to you're trying to tell me you called this last night and it was a different number than you just called right now. Well, like, what is reality? No. What is even happening? No. That's what I mean. Like they're both no, the a, same fucking the same number. number. And it changed. Yeah. That's crazy. And you, you called the number that was in the truck of the mouth. You should have oh. put that you were over 50 and see what happened. Do either one of you have your cell phones right now? Mm-hmm. I, I, I I do. Yeah, what's all right. Good? I mean, if this is all a failed experiment, Waterboy, you can just cut the whole thing. Yeah, out. I was gonna say, whoever's yeah. editing this, cut this out yeah. and make it sound cool. Um, all right, what number all am right. I calling? So it's 1 800 387 8248. Because last night when I called it, it was like, oh, if you're a male for a female, press this. If you're a female for a male, press this. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. It's sure. We have a special promotion today for select callers. If you are over 50, please press 1 now. If not, press 2. All right. I'm press 2. Press not. 2. We're, hit two. We're younger than that. Uh-oh. Thank you for calling the Medical Alert Center. This is Jessica on our... Ah! Dude. Sorry! I was the sex hotline last night. <laughs> My God. Oh, I'm fucking Some swimming. woman just thought I'd fallen and I couldn't get up. They're gonna wait, like, call dude, me back. Wait, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just on my horror podcast. Yo, I, I was just, I was just listening to yours, but it was the same lady that was talking to you. Isn't that weird? Dude, everyone's, <laughs> what is happening? Someone's gonna call me back and like, sir, are you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, no big deal. Just my, my friend saw your number in a truck in a horror I, movie that came out like 20 years ago. I was just checking. Do you know I'm, Sutter? I'm, I'm calling this number again, like late, late night tonight. Because oh, I swear, I swear to God, that's why when we started this podcast, I was like, you know, I, I would like to apologize in advance. I had two dick adjacent things, and one was the <laughs> swollen balls, and the other one was his fucking hotline. That was the weirdest. That um... May, maybe it's like a timeshare. <laughs> Do they right. have a timeshare on the one eight hundred number? Maybe, dude. Uh, but I thought it was crazy that the same lady that answered for just so it was it had to be just a regular like. Like W A I think. Yeah. Who's what are we watching next? Let's do the ending. Next week, hack stab slash. If you stuck with this through this fucking fiasco, um, we are watching the cabin in the woods. It is my pick. I love this movie. Justin Man. hates this movie. I love this movie. Uh, <sighs> I you can you can watch it if you have a subscription to uh, HBO Max. It's free on Max. If not, uh, you got to rent it. So suck it up, Buttercup, and come join us next week as we dive into a horror meta, which Let's is go. kind of becoming my thing, I guess. I'm excited to rewatch Let's it. Let's do it. I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, Hashtag right. slash. We out. Oh, oh.